Anybody that's in having trouble in walking through the storm or the dark, I know you're in the spirit. And I pray for you. Because I realize that there's enough trouble to go around everywhere. Nobody should rejoice at another person's trouble. Because it's enough to knock at your door one day. And when you walk through the storm, keep your head high. Don't be afraid of the dark. Because Jesus may seem sometime to be in the dark in your life, but he's never at a distance. Well, he said, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. I want to thank Pearl. If she gets through singing like that, I don't even have to preach. He <laughs> really did a sermon in song. And God put that on my heart because it was unplanned and unrehearsed. I am led by the Spirit of God. And I love everybody. Nobody in the world that I hate. No, what well, Jesus said, love your enemies. Of course, I know you have to pray mighty hard to love some people. But pray hard and love them anyhow. Sometimes you have to kind of hold your nose to love some people. But love them anyhow. God bless your hearts. And so, we are so grateful to God. Because that's what this is all about. That's what the Bible Way Church stands for, to help those that need help, to strengthen those that need strength. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn to be. I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest until you will be served. I thank God for the miracles and for the wonders of God. Bang me down through the years. Fifty-nine years I've been pastoring this congregation. I'm happy. And I'm still on the way. May not be able to run fast as I used to, but I can still run through troops. And I can leap over some walls in the name of Jesus. I have a message that God has given me. And this television series will be taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles. And this morning, from the second chapter of Acts, and uh, that very, very profound 40th verse, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. The words of St. Peter in his red sermon on the day of Pentecost. And uh, the series of sermons that God had given me, God directed to me to that book. And I'm going to pound away, the Lord willing, message after message from the book of Acts because it's a very, very important book because it is, uh, exercises such, as it were, inspiring and such illuminating vision on your life. And it's just as relevant today in the 20th century as it was in that day in the first century because the prophetic structure of the universe is so built that the word of God is able to help this generation just like it helped that generation. And of all people and of all generations, we need God as never before. Now, the writer of that book of Acts, of course, is Dr. Luke very beloved physician. And it's not only the book of Acts, it's not only the Acts of the Apostles, but it is also a book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is spoken of over 50 times in the book of Acts. And so, you know, they were working together, God and man. The book of the Apostles and the Apostles was getting orders from headquarters on high. God telling them what to do and what to say in the midst of a day and an age when 
it seemed that society and the social order of that day was out of order, just like the social order of our day is out of order. And the Greco-Roman civilization, which is the highest civilization that man had ever reached, it had, was becoming unglued and coming loose at the seams. And everybody was confused because of the disarrangement of their society. And we find ourselves in a similar condition today. But just at that time, God interposed and he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost as a rushing mighty wind. And you know, God had me praying the other Sunday here. The Holy Ghost was so manifest in itself and the presence of God was so mighty in our midst. And I thought about Jesus said to Dr. Nicodemus, who was ashamed, no doubt, to come to Jesus by day. So he came to him by night to have a conference and said, Good Master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And he began to speak, complimenting Jesus, very polite. We know that thou art a teacher come from God, because no man can do the things that thou doest except God be with him. And then Jesus went on and said to him, Ye must be born again. Nicodemus one that said, How can these things be? Although he was a doctor of philosophy and Jewish in the Hebrew religion. And Jesus said, Marvel not that I say to you, ye must be born again. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old and enter again to the prenatal state into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, No. Says so just like this. You hear the wind blow. And you can't tell from whence it come, nor whence it go. And so is every man that is born of the Spirit of God. He said, except a man is born again of water and of the Spirit, he cannot inherit eternal life. The wind bloweth where it listens, you hear the sound thereof, you can't tell from whence it come or whence it goes. And God had me preaching other Sunday morning as the power of God came down in this great sanctuary. And I looked up to God, and the extemporaneous prayer broke out of my mouth, saying, Blow, wind of God, blow! And on the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind, filled all the house wherein they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it set upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, other languages, as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. What they felt, what they were feeling, and what they were experiencing was greater than what their mind could describe. And their own vernacular, and their own language, and the Holy Ghost, Hutton's language, took over. And they began to speak the wonders of God. And the people were amazed that heard them. For this group, the 120, were as it were, Galilean, but God blessed and poured out his spirit upon them. And the Holy Ghost had me said, blow wind of God, oh blow. I tell you, as God's spirit began to come through here like a refreshing breeze, even beyond that of the air conditioner that we have, air conditioned throughout this great sanctuary, and the wind of God began to blow, and honey, when God's wind began to blow on you, I don't care how hot and how feverish and you may be in contending and striving with the problems of life. It's cool, it's a cool, refreshing breeze that blows on the soul. You don't have to take a fan and fan to fan it, hallelujah, but you can just let God have his way. And whenever you pray, just let him have his way and he will fix it for you. So I found myself praying, blow, wind of God blow, and God's wind is blowing in the sanctuary, refreshing and filling our souls, causing us to rejoice in the Lord God of our salvation. I don't care how much intellect, and I love intellect and learning, thank God, but without the Spirit of God, over 50 times the Holy Ghost, of course, he, the, the book of Acts usually refer to it as the Holy Ghost. People today are so refined until they don't want you to say the Holy Ghost. They say, say, Holy Spirit. 
But I said, the Holy Ghost. I love to say, let me hear. I want to testify. <laughs> Everybody else testifying, I got to testify. Oh, you're looking good here today. I see the blessing and the glory of God upon you. And I tell you, I've been indulging in the spirit of worship that have been sweeping continuously through this great temple. And I join with the psalmist you read these words high up over the nave, up over the choir of this temple. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What for? To behold the beauty of the Lord. And what else? And to Let's give God a hand. Thank the Lord. This is a wonderful way to start the new year, new first Sunday in the new year. John the Revelator said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. This is so beautiful to go forth and worship and in praises in worship and in praises and in adoration a shout and a clap unto the Lord the 47th Psalm said clap your hands all ye people the Psalm of you what he was talking about applauding the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. Rejoicing in the Lord God of our salvation. Honey, this is beautiful. Money can't buy what you feel and what you're inspired by. Silver and gold cannot pay for that. It's the gift of God and it's eternal life. I tell you, I'd rather to be here than anywhere. Hallelujah. The heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand forever. And I'm rejoicing. And I thank God for you and our preaching and our teaching. And leadership has not been in vain, but it's been to the glory of God. Whether you are perfect this morning or not, we thank God that you're on your way to perfection. Hallelujah. We're on our way. We know where the goalposts are. Now, so many people don't even know where the goalposts of the true values of life are. Hallelujah. They don't know where the goalposts are. And you're in trouble when you're playing a game and don't even know where the goalposts are. I thank God that we know where the goalposts are. And we are pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's the goalpost. And that's the reason the tears run you down your face sometimes. But you press on in the hand. With an aching heart, sometimes a painful body, you press on in the hand. You know the best is yet to be. Hallelujah. It hasn't been, it's been mighty nice, but the best, the best, is yet to be. And this is a part of it. Hallelujah. 
As the football coach said, the George Allen, he used to say, the present, the future is now. Amen. The future is now. The best is also yet to be, I say. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this work be of men, it will come to know. Amen. See, time is a, will tell. Amen. You don't have to try to outrun anybody. You don't have to try to outdo anybody. Just keep on marching on. For God's truth is marching on. Well, if this counsel, this work be a man, it will come to know. Listen, but if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. I don't care how many lies you tell. I don't care how hard you fight. I don't care how you may hate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may hinder me, but you can't stop me. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. That's the reason the Bible we church is standing. This year, we will celebrate the Lord willing our 60th anniversary as pastor of this church because of the fact, amen, that if it be of God, you can't overthrow it. The wind can blow, the storm can rage, but you can't overthrow it. I'm the first preacher back for the Holy Ghost preacher to have the permission of the government to marry anybody in Washington. When I came here, I couldn't marry a soul. Even the, in this uh, District of Columbia, in Columbus, I had my state license and my county license, all of it. But here in Washington, no Pentecostal Holy Ghost preacher could marry anybody. Amen. We had to get other denomination, Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, any, but you, and when I went down there, they threw the same thing at me. Just 20 years old, 1927, my few members, if they wanted to marry, I wanted to position like anybody else to marry them because the First Amendment rights, Constitution, freedom of worship. I went on down there, and they said, well, you've got to have somebody of your religion to sign for you before you can get permission to marry anybody. I said, I haven't got anybody of my religion here that's already signed up to sign for me. So it's got to be a first, and I'm the first. I'm here. Amen. Lord <laughs> God, there's Dr. Pruitt, Bishop Pruitt. <laughs> Bless your heart. This great preacher from Africa and America. <laughs> Amy Pa. Now, so I said to them, I, 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 I'm the first, amen, and I want to say, well, if you were Methodist or Baptist or somebody like Bishop Pruitt's uh, congregation, amen, you couldn't, you couldn't marry Pruitt with me. <laughs> Thank God. So I said, I said, well, I pulled out my credentials from the state of Ohio. I pulled out my credentials, the youngest preacher ever to be an ordained in the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ when I was 18 years old. I pulled that out. I went on back in and brought out my charter that Bishop Lawson had issued me to organize a church here. Thank God. And then I wrote a letter. I didn't have any typewriters in those days, no secretary, so I wrote it myself. I told my members, I had 20 members, I said, sign this. And they signed it. And I went on down there and left it with the secretary. And she said, I'll turn it over to the judge. And when she come tell me about it, couldn't be uh, because we were not registered all right. I said to her, I said, you discriminating, are you? I wasn't but 20 years old, but I've been a fighter all my life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now listen, and when I went back there that Wednesday, they had my credentials. George Stafford said, had my credentials. And I signed. And here come all the other Pentecostals and holiness and uh, apostolics, and I signed theirs. And then they be signed the others, and some of them don't even have enough sense to remember that I did that. But I did it just the same. And God will reward me someday. There stood by me this night, while we are sitting in this building now, in this great temple, one of the largest churches in Washington, because God stood by me, and he stood by you. When that highway showed me the, the, the department, that, that uh, as it were, the plans and the drawing and the configuration of the highway. What is that, 95? 395 International Highway. Not just a local road through Washington, but that's federal, honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if I hadn't knew that God would stand by me, I would have given up. What is the 
no preacher. Amen. No elected official. No money. Just God. Hallelujah. And all the money that I need, he supplies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But money couldn't do this. But the Lord stood by me. And it's not a demon in hell. Or any of his brothers or his neighbors or anybody, his relative, can stop you if you really got your hand in God. The Lord will stand by you in the darkest of the hour, in the darkest night, and all around your soldier's way, he will be your help and stay. Therefore, you fear no evil. Hallelujah. David said, when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. God will trip the devil up on your job. I don't care whether he's your supervisor or whether he's your boss or whether he's a member of the Senate or a member of the House or whether he's a member of the Cabinet or whether he's the President of the USA. Amen. God can trip us up if we bother a child of God. Because it is better for one to have a stone tied around about his neck and cast it into the bottom of the sea than to fear one of the little ones. Not a big one, just a little child of God. You're in trouble. It's not because of who they are, but to whom they belong. You see, that's the reason God will fight for when you. When they touch you, you touch him. You touch the apple of an eye, his eye because you're his. And you can't get to me without getting to God. And you cannot do any more to me than what God permits you to do. And then whatever God permits you to do, God is going to give me strength to bear. For he said that he would not put any more upon none of us than we're able to bear. I am Bishop Smallwood E. Williams founder and pastor of the Magnificent Bible Way Temple, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share with you the blessings of the Lord and to say that we are on our way to heaven and enjoying the trip, having a wonderful time, serve the Lord in this blessed, bountiful, beautiful Bible Way. And I want to give you to understand that the Bible Way of living is not just another denomination congregation or organization, but the Bible way is a way of life and living in harmony with the word of the Lord, rightly divided. And to that end, we take pleasure in sharing with you. I plan to preach from the book of Acts on this entire television series of sermons. I think it's time that perhaps I should say that there's we should rediscover the book of Acts and its relevancy to this generation. Yes, it was relevant to the people of the first century. It is relevant to society and to our social order in the 20th century. The cry is still going up from all over the world as they had on the day of Pentecost. Men and brethren, what shall we do or what must we do? And the answer is still the same, and we find it in the book of Acts. Not only is it the book of Acts of the Apostles, but it's also the book of action of the Holy Spirit. For more than 50 times, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is referred to because of the relevancy of this message. May God bless you. Write to me, Bishop Smallwood E. Williams, The Bible Way of Living, 1100. New Jersey Avenue in the city of Washington, D.C., USA, zip code 20001. May God ever bless you and keep you and smile upon you. In his name, God bless you.